He entered the large semicircular room and glanced up at the interpreter's booths. His speech would be translated into Arabic, Chinese, French, Russian, and Spanish. The United Nations logo dominated the gold-colored podium. His heart missed a beat as he saw the 193 first committee members already in their seats. They must at least pass his proposal to disarm. They discussed issues six times a year, but often any resolution contained numerous conditions demanded by each country. The results were often weak, useless laws. He nodded to the United States president, who smiled noncommittally and sat down. The wait was unbearable. At last, the secretary general introduced him, and he made his way to the lectern. The room buzzed as he cleared his throat. We live in unprecedented times, he said. The enormity of recent tragedies has affected each country represented here today. I would appreciate your attention as I suggest possible explanations for the flu pandemic, the Chicago fire, and the European lethal gas cloud. He paused, and the assembly murmured, well, here goes nothing. The films and audio session I'll present in moments will astound you, he said. Experts have independently assessed each one and without exception attest to their validity. Frank signaled and the first film rolled. The assembly sat silently, staring ahead, and he studied each state leader's face. He then glanced at the interpreter's booth. Many wore stunned expressions as they translated and stumbled over the strange words. He realized they didn't know the English for an entity or light being. As the technicians changed out each film and audio, the buzz from the delegates increased. The semicircular chamber resembled a giant hive full of angry bees. Frank felt nauseous. They weren't buying it. He'd included the two latest television programs to save further explanation. Perhaps he should mention yesterday's crop circles, or maybe not. The final audio ended, and he moved onto the podium. The room exploded with a cacophony of angry voices. The assembly argued for a full ten minutes before he could speak. A wave of dizziness caused him to rock slightly. Thank you for your kind attention, he said. We are fighting on many levels for the survival of humanity, and time is short. I ask each of you to search your conscience. I know the evidence is unlike any you've seen before, but I urge you to seriously consider it. The room again fell silent. He swallowed, trying again to clear the large lump in his throat. Unfortunately, we humans are combative by instinct. We must protect our sovereignty and food supply against warmongers who launch hostilities to increase their own land mass and wealth. Prejudice by color, race, and religion also causes conflict, as we have witnessed in recent times between Islam and Christianity. Frank felt as if an intense stream of fiery air had entered the top of his head and blown through his body. What on earth? He breathed deeply and continued, This assembly has successfully passed resolutions, for example, to restrict the production of chemical weapons. He heard banging and looked up. The interpreters were hitting their booth windows, frantically waving their headphones. What was wrong? He paused, then continued, we have a responsibility to... My God, they understood what he was saying. It seemed that he was talking in all the different languages of the assembly. Now his credibility was shot. They'd think he was mad. The room burst into chaos, and the secretary general pushed him aside. Order! Order! The noise died down as the man held his headphone to his ear. Ladies and gentlemen... It appears each of us can hear and understand the British Prime Minister in our own language. I ask the interpreters to stand down while he closes his argument for disarmament. Frank turned his back and used his inhaler. His heart buckled in his chest. The sign at last. Thank you, Cabshiel. I asked the council leader, Cabshiel, for a sign to help me convince you of the situation's seriousness. I believe he has now given that sign.